Hi, my name is Steve Strotsma, and as some of you may know, I've been involved in the sport of cave diving for almost 30 years. I've had the pr privilege of diving in Beacon Woods and Wayne Wayne's World Cave System uh, on numerous occasions over the years, and uh, as you will find out in the video coming up, uh, they are now the same system, having been connected on May 4th by the Southeast Exploration Team. The hard work and perseverance of all these explorers over the years has paid off. Uh, this is the story of the exploration of Beacon Woods and Wayne's World Cave Systems, located in a heavily urbanized area of Pasco County, Florida. West Central Florida isn't what one would call a primed cave diving location. Caves and sinks are small, often deep, and definitely very silty. Fresh water is always mixed with tannic and salt water, further reducing visibility. The tidal influence of the Gulf of Mexico creates strong and unpredictable currents. Regardless of these conditions, caves here are always beckoning diehard explorers. Two of the largest cave systems in Pasco County are Wayne's World and Beacon Woods. They both have long and interesting history of discoveries and explorations. This will be a short presentation about a team of divers exploring and discovering the unknown in Pasco County of West Central Florida. We will hear from people directly involved in their search for knowledge about underwater caves and the obstacles they faced, as well as the first-hand accounts of overcoming challenges related to access and usage of these wonderful places, issues of awareness of environmental, conservation, and preservation concerns, as well as cave diving safety will also be raised. There will not be enough time, even in a two-hour special, to accurately describe every effort and mention every person who contributed to the knowledge of these cave systems. We have only a few minutes, so we apologize in advance for any omissions. The comprehensive history of the exploration of Beacon Woods and Wayne's World will appear on our website soon. Look for it at www.cteam.org. Why don't we start with brief history of the cave exploration. Will Walters discovered the first entrance into the Beacon Woods system in 1974. It was named Nexus Sink. Later that year, the Round Sink was located based on the information from the dye trace experiment conducted by the USGS. The experiment also indicated a possible hydraulic connection to the Gulf of Mexico. By the end of 1978, a total of five sinks were discovered in the area. From south to north, they were Round Sink, Nexus, Briar, Golf Ball, and Smokehouse Pond. They were all believed to belong to the same cave system. Briar, Golf Ball, and Smokehouse Pond were actually connected later that year by a passage averaging 70 feet in depth. The connection to the south to Nexus and from Nexus to Round Sink still remained elusive. How did you find these sinks? This place was actually uh, showed to me by an uh, old man who used to catch crabs out in uh, Hudson and uh, he, he told me about this particular place because I was asking him if he knew any caves and sinkholes around here that I may go scuba diving in and he told me uh, where this was. All the sinks in Beacon Woods are on private land. How was the access back then? Well, back then there was no houses around here. This was all woods, and we could drive in through a dirt road on the north side of Smokehouse Pond. You could drive, drive right up to it. Well, who did you dive with? Would we recognize any of the names of your diving partners back then? Well, uh, I dove with, I have a dove with Sheck Exley and I think uh, Sheck laid some line in here, and I think even before she Sheckley, uh, Sheck Exley, there was a uh, guy named Frank March that put some line in here. Uh, Frank, Frank died in a blue hole in the Bahamas, unfortunately. Do you remember your best dive around here? Well, my favorite dive in, in, in this particular system is when we discovered uh, Nexus Sink, when we went in there on, and that was on April the 27th, 1978. I thought that was the neatest thing to uh, corkscrew down and come out in this real clear room. Was it you who named the sink you discovered Nexus? No, that was actually named by uh, the, my dive buddy at the time. His name was Jay Friend, and he, he named it Nexus Sink, which Nexus is a word that means connection, I assume. In 1980, Steve Strotsma and Vaughn Maxwell successfully connected Round Sink and Nexus Sink. The explorers discovered that the lines from north and south run parallel for several hundred feet, and poor visibility was the only obstacle to making the connection earlier. A new sink was discovered 600 feet south from Briar in March of 1981. It was named Stratomax after its discoverers, Steve Strotsma and Vaughn Maxwell. Over a thousand feet of passage was explored south of Stratomax, but no connection with the Nexus Passage was made. Stratomax is one of the most important entries into this system. How did it get discovered originally? After, I don't know, eight or nine hundred feet, as, if memory serves correctly, uh, a debris cone, 
and looked up and there was a chimney. So we were about at the end of our dive from all the false starts and false leads and so on and so forth. So I started up it and uh, got to about 20 feet and it looked like the, you know, the whole world was collapsing on your head. So I, I was on a patch reel and uh, visibility turned to zero, limbs, branches, muck started falling. So I hastily retreated, got Steve and we got the heck out of there. But I was, I was pretty excited about the possibilities. I had thought for some reason that I'd seen a glimmer of light or, or something that, that indicated maybe it went to the surface. Next day, or two days later, Will Walters and myself came through and we came around a bend and you could see a glow and I, it was a very eerie feeling because there was just, there was just light in this impossibly dark tunnel. And uh, we shut our lights off and swam up under it and there it was, you could look up and see all the way to the surface. So what had happened was our bubbles, Steve's, Steve Strotsma and my bubbles had uh, dislodged everything and it was like it had never been clogged. Mm -hmm. So uh, we surfaced, Will and I surfaced and then we all agreed we named it, Steve and I found it, so we named it Stratomax for Steve Strasma von Maxwell. You are being credited with connecting Round Sing and Nexus. What's the story? Steve and I get credit for that. And in all fairness, the credit should probably go to Will Walters and Jay Friend. They basically made the connection and didn't know it. The visibility was so bad, they ended a line. So I would guess, I mean, the legend says two feet. It wasn't. It was six to eight feet, possibly as far as 10 feet from that south line. You know, Will had been working south out of Nexus. And uh, we came into his line. You know, and uh, we got to the end of the line out of round, you know, past, substantially past the manatee bones and uh, tied on like 1,500 foot spool of line and we're really ready to go. Two flipper kicks and there, the, there was the line mm -hmm. going into Nexus. So uh, technically, I guess we made the connection, but uh, we don't deserve the credit. Juan, do you think there are more unexplored caves around here? You know, for years we heard, well, that's it. There is no more. But... Uh, there's, there's always more. Um, I think you have to find, the best way is to find locals, people with local knowledge, and befriend them, don't offend them. And uh, some of these old timers can tell you about all kind of holes out in the woods that no one's ever been in. Would you share your worst dive in the Beacon Woods with us? The worst dive by far was a, was a dive out of Nexus Sink. Um, I was with uh, Steve Strassma and Bill Faring who's a former president of the CDS, NSS CDS. Um, Steve and I were going to show Bill Faring the pit, you know, down, downstream from, from Nexus, and we were going to do a double stage. Uh, I had reconditioned some, some steel 72s for my stage bottles, and at a, a dive shop that's now closed, uh, they tumbled them for me, and in those days, to dry them out, they poured denatured alcohol into them, tumbled them, turned them upside down and put a hair dryer in the bottom, a blow dryer, to dry them out. Mm -hmm. What had happened was, unbeknownst to the store or myself, the heating element went out in the dryer, but the fan motor still ran, so after they dried, which they really didn't, but after they, they blew for two or three hours, hooked them up, pumped them, went diving. I got about almost to the slot and um, and I, I, I noticed there was another line in there and I was really furious. You know, somebody's diving our cave. And uh, then I looked at my watch and it had like four hands instead of two. So I was seeing double, but it didn't occur to me really what was going on. The next thing I, 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 I remember was, was being at a convenience store a couple hours later. And w what had happened was I'd swung off the line and in sort of slow motion, Strassman and Faring say that I swam over to the side of the cave and sort of had my head up against the wall and was just sort of slowly kicking. My eyes were open, but you know, lights on, nobody home. They took me out of the cave, back out the nexus exit and saw that I had surfaced. And uh, I stripped off my gear, my suit. I had left everything, a trail of equipment on the ground in my van. Got into my van, changed clothes and was on the way home when I finally sort of became cognizant that something weird had happened. That was by far my worst dive ever. West Central Florida isn't what one would call a prime cave diving location. Caves and sinks are small, 
often deep and definitely very silty. Fresh water is always mixed with tannic and salt water, further reducing visibility. Paul, you've been diving and exploring caves all over the world. How about the local caves? I guess I've been not all over the world, but different, de definitely different many places. Uh, but my diving around here has been uh, just about a every, every uh, hole that exists I have had a look at in one time or another. Some of them I've looked at more than others, like for instance the, the Beacon Woods Cave, I've been there a bunch of times, and um, some of the other holes in the area also. You are the owner of Scuba Vest and you also own your own sinkhole. Is it in any way connected with the Beacon Woods system? The sinkhole I have, we call it the Hudson Grotto. It was originally, as I recall the history of it, it was originally called Pat Sink. Then it was changed to Edward Sink. And uh, we've decided to call it Hudson Grotto because it sort of puts it on the map as being in Hudson, Florida, which is where the, we have the dive store. And if it's connected to the cave system, it's too small of a connection. Well, how, how would you compare the caves here in central west Florida with the popular caves up in what we call cave country. The cave country, the Suwannee River Basin. Uh, the caves here in, in, in central west Florida, the Sun Coast, what they call this now, the Nature's Coast, I think they call it now. Um, the caves, we have a greater variety within the caves that we have here. Some of them have blue water, most of them have uh, tannic water. Uh, some of them close to the coast, like here, have some salt water in them. Uh, their passages can be small, their passages can be big. Uh, the, the, the formation of the rocks is just as varied as anywhere else, all in one place, which makes it, to me, a much more interesting place to go. Plus, it's much closer to home. As an instructor, do you think that the local caves are a good place for new divers to explore? Um, I don't know that new divers would be a good place for them to, to start exploring. It, it definitely is a good place to go with someone that's been there so they can gain the, the proper respect uh, of, of this environment because it's, I mean, it's a very unforgiving environment with the limited visibility and all the different conditions you may encounter on one dive. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't see a problem for new, new cave divers being here as long as they're with someone that's been there before that can make sure that they, they learn the ropes the, the right way.